it's a love story. It's about two guys meeting uh, in the early noughts, as you guys call it. We call it the noughties in the UK, which I think is cheekier and sexier. But in the, in the aughts, do you guys like aughts or the noughts? One of those. Um, and it really is just uh, chronicle, chronicling their relationship, um, them getting to know each other, the you know, the things that any relationship goes through in terms of being being tested and finding out how you fit together and uh, those awkward moments, those moments of growth. And then um, then Kit is diagnosed with cancer and that obviously has a huge impact on their relationship. At the beginning of the film, I think Kit um, is is kind of that that mid-twenties kind of not quite kind of knowing what you want to do but not quite there yet he's got a, a day job which is like a bit creative but working for Kosi doing their signage he isn't making a living from his art which like so many artists don't get an opportunity to do so I think he's got a little bit of like awkwardness and embarrassment about that um and in terms of like relationships, I think he's like out on the town, he's on the apps, he hasn't had a significant relationship up to that point. He's having a, probably a lot of fun, casual sex. Um, and and yeah, meeting, meet, meeting Michael is kind of a, a real shift for him in his life, I think. Um, but he's kind of just like doing what most people are doing in their 20s, I think, is kind of finding out who they who they are and all of that. I think they develop this relationship just as we all do that they find real common ground and real safety in being understood and being seen by someone else and I think they are a little eccentric um and a little I hate this word quirky but they're a little yeah um and I think they have this real shared sense of humor and naughtiness and cheekiness um and I think they kind of show each other in their own ways how to relax a little more. I think they're both slightly tightly, tightly wound on different subjects, but I think they help each other in that way. Um, I think they're both quite neurotic but about different things and they kind of like relax each other, I would say, and make a good team. Sebastian is a, a co-worker of Kit's. Um, at uh, the, the the furniture place that he works at, the showroom, and um, I think there is a like a natural chemistry between them, a, an attraction, and uh, he becomes like a focal point of uh, of Michael's kind of paranoia that maybe there is something happening between them. But I think also kind of um, <clears throat> highlights some of Michael's insecurity around around Kit and around them being a good match in that in that way and and yeah he you know he creates an interesting tension for them to navigate when they first get the cancer diagnosis they're actually on a break they've they've hit this point in their relationship where they're seeing a couples counselor a couples therapist and it's not quite working um in the way that they want it to so they're kind of in this moment of considering what they want to be and they're spending time living apart and i think what the diagnosis does is bring them back together um in a very intense way because they realize that they love each other but that they need each other and, and that kit needs michael th through that time um and i think it deepens their love i think um I can only imagine that uh, helping someone through that, supporting them through that, um, and seeing someone at their most vulnerable would deepen that connection. And they're really tested by it, I think. I just felt so lucky to be working with Jim, and Jim cares for this film and the script and this story so much. And it has such passion for for it, for for uh, telling the story authentically and for playing Michael authentically, and also just a real desire to connect to it in a way that we understood it as actors. I've never felt anyone believe in me as much as I felt Jim believed in me. I think Michael Showalter is like the perfect person to direct this because uh, it fits with his body of work already, but also he... Uh, 
we if we if Jim and I were like so emotional <laughs> all the time <laughs> on set, Michael is uh, not sentimental and he has his eyes on the prize on making a good film and it not being indulgent. And um, I think he was the perfect balance in his kind of energy and his and his brightness. Not that we were ever you know we were always having fun. We weren't there depressed, but they, it was just he was just such a uh, perfect compliment, I think, to. Um, to what Jim and I were bringing and also the perfect person to steer to steer the film and he's such a collaborator as well I, I, I've i never worked so collaboratively in terms of him really wanting your input as an actor like so often you will hear you will hear someone kind of pretend that they want to know how an actor is feeling about it or how the lines are feeling and Michael really does want to know it's genuine like I think a lot of the time people don't really want to hear how actors what actors are thinking they're a bit like just say it just do, do what's on the page but this truly was kind of like making sure we all felt connected to it that we were all saying the right thing it was a really interesting one for me forming like forming kit my version of kit i um once we finally knew that i could do it i was sent um via michael Ossiello a bunch of home video footage and also kit's memorial uh uh video from his um funeral and that's when I kind of really encountered my le the level of responsibility I felt in portraying him and telling his story. And it, initially, that was quite overwhelming. I was like, it was very emotional. I felt very emotional to be seeing him and to kind of thinking that in some ways I was stepping into his into his shoes. And I I, uh, I was a little intimidated, I think, that in, in wanting to get that right for him, for Michael and, and for Kit. And um, through discussions with, with Showalter and Jim, they, they were really interested in me finding my own version of Kit. And they, I, he was quite an idiosyncratic energy, <clears throat> really interesting guy and kind of, um, yeah, quite kind of particular mannerisms and quite particular voice. And that they felt that they really didn't want me to kind of concentrate on doing an impression of him in any way, but to kind of distill down his essence into into me and to and for it to kind of be very truthful. I think I think had I gone down the the other route, I would have been doing lots of acting <laughs> in in a in a film that they wanted to keep very truthful. Major themes of the film. Um, the major theme is just love for me. That's the that's the takeaway. Um, I think this film will inspire people to love better. That's what I wrote to Michael Osiello after I read the book. And I think, um, luckily, that translates to the film as well. I think it is an important LGBTQ plus story. I, I don't know. I think all uh, LGBTQ plus stories are important um, for us at the moment. I think, like, I personally think representation has the power to change the world, um, you know, now more than ever we are consumers of tv and film that's you know we learned that so much during the pandemic um and there is so much being made and i think that uh either watching about a story that you don't know about can, can well that can make you more compassionate and give you more understanding and uh give you an insight into someone's life that you wouldn't otherwise have had and i think also it gives a a community of people a chance to learn about themselves as well and see yourself reflected back and i think that's really important to I think we're all on a quest in life to be to feel like we belong somewhere and to be understood and to be seen and I think that um, representation in in film and tv has the, the power to do that